Hello friends, my name is Ari Ferger and today I'm going to talk about Icelandic rune staves or Icelandic magical staves. This is the third part of this series and the last one and I hope you have enjoyed the previous videos. Now with no more delay let's delve into the knowledge of the Icelandic rune staves. Hotastafur, terror stave. Carve this stave on an oaken staff or small oak plate and throw it at the feet of your foe to frighten him. The stave should be carved with a steel knife. The Icelandic word oti, which means fear, dread, can be compared semantically to the word heigir, from which egisjalmur is derived, so we continue to have the same sort of ideas, constructing a single word that by itself already invokes fear, and carved on a piece of oak. As we have seen before, certain trees and their magical properties enhance the power of the rune staves. You will most likely find this rune stave throughout the internet as you can see here in the second example. It's called Skalkurastafur, which roughly translated is to put your enemy with a sickening fear of you. It's not that the first example is much more accurate, although it's the one we see with a better representation on the manuscripts of recorded spells. Through history we see many similar symbols, some with the exact same names, others with variations of the same names, but their purposes virtually remain the same. Spells evolve not only through failure and success, but also with the knowledge gained through time and also adding new religious elements as you have already seen in the previous videos. Threprun. Here's a good example of what I've just told you. A rune stave with the exact same name as the one I've shown you in the first video. Also very similar in its physical construction. From the first video, the stave was to kill your enemy's cattle. And this one is the same principle. If you want your enemy to lose his livestock and possessions, then lay this sign in the hoof print of his horse. These are two rune staves from two different manuscripts, so it is rare to find this close correspondence between staves. As I've said before, farming, fishing and trade have always been the main activities of Iceland's economy, so it's not surprising that a great portion of the spells in the manuscripts focus on these activities. There are spells designed to heal livestock, to protect them and curing them of the effects of evil magic. Thengur a fertility rune stave. This is what is written in the manuscript. If you want a girl to become pregnant by you, cut this sign in a piece of cheese and give it to her to eat. I'm sure it wasn't just the cheese that would do the trick, but of course, first creating a link with fertility before the sexual intercourse. Fengur may be one of the names of Huden, miswritten from Fengur. Huden in, in this aspect is very similar to the Greek god Zeus. Wherever he goes, he can't keep it in his pants and yet another child is born. At some point, Odin might have also been related to fertility due to so many mythological accounts we have of him having sexual intercourse with every woman he encounters during his wanderings. These mythological accounts might be remnants of tales when this deity was first related to fertility even before being considered the god of death and war. Fengur may also be related to the Icelandic Fegur, a kind of spirit, elf, a fey, related to death, to be bound to death, fated to die. The relation between this rune stave and this sort of spirit may be linked to the fear of stillborn children, and the rune stave is to prevent that, so maybe it's not just about fertility but also to ensure the woman successfully gives birth to an healthy child. Lossavriothur, lock breaker. Lay this sign on the lock and blow into it. You will most likely find this rune stave throughout the internet without the runic inscription, but I wanted to show you the entire rune stave, because as we have seen before, Incantations are very important to imbue the rune staves with power and invoke that power. The rune staves uh, read which can be translated to all trolls reach into the lock, the devil reach into it so that it will break. So probably the sign was carved on a lock and the part it says you blow into the lock 
it's probably to recite this incantation into it. Kjofastafur, Tivstev. Again, another example of the exact same name as we have seen in other rune staves on previous videos, but a different design. Put this sign under the threshold of your enemy and he will collapse when he steps over it if he has committed an act of thievery against you. There are many rune staves with this same name and all to catch thieves, although the designs and the methods are different. Teofastafir, Thief Staves. Speaking of catching thieves, here are two other examples. The first example, to see a thief Carve these staves in so-called manslaughter oak and have it under your arm. Manslaughter oak or manthake. Man killing or manslaughter oak. The exact botanical identity of this type of oak is unknown. It may be referring to a kind of oak used to hang criminals. The second example. Carve these staves in maple wood, Volvjork, and lay them under your head and you will see the thief in your sleep. Thievery and thieves were so common during medieval and modern Iceland that people even dreamt with them. Anyway, Valdjork, birch of the slain, is a kind of birch or maple tree unknown in Iceland. Probably the remnants of spells using the wood of trees from mainland Europe, possibly from Norway, from which Icelandic settlers came from. Here we have two examples of two types of trees related to death or the killing of criminals. We have to take in mind that in ancient Scandinavian societies, even in terms of the law, there was a big difference between murder and killing. If a killing was performed in stealth, the person was considered a murderer. But if the killing was done and the killer publicly announced his deed, it was manslaughter, an offense that could be atoned with Wergild, which comes from the Anglo-Saxon and its many paid to the relatives of a murder victim in compensation for the loss and to prevent a blood feud. Manslaughter was usually the killing of someone who was a criminal but had been banished and was an outlaw, beyond the reach of the law and was a vargar, a wolf, and as such anyone could kill and hunt on sight this person because the outlaw was considered to be a beast and not a person. To have success have this sign on grey paper under your left arm when you are talking to somebody. It's not specific if the intention is to succeed in a business conversation or any other type of conversation. But speaking of business deals, here's a rune stave to have victory in business with all people. Draw this sign on blotting paper and wear it under your left arm and let no one know that you have it. As I've told you before, trading was one of the main activities in Iceland's economy and success in business was what guaranteed a person's survival and to be financially stable. Dunfaxi, down main. If you want to win a law case, carry this sign with you, if you believe in it. It should be on a piece of new oak. This one is so that you will not die in the water. Wear this sign under your left arm. Living on an island such as Iceland, I'm sure people would fear drowning, but this fear probably came from a remote past when the Norse started to venture into open waters, unknown seas. Since most Scandinavians had been farmers and with little contact with the sea before the Viking Age, I'm sure many of the sea adventurers didn't even know how to swim and a shipwreck, even near the coast, would be the death of many. Also, during the witch trials of Iceland, men convicted of witchery and sorcery were burnt at the stake. But unlike mainland Europe, in Iceland, women were drowned, bound with ropes in the rocks or something else, waiting for the tide to slowly crawl and drown them. A slow, agonizing death, enhancing the fear of drowning. For protection against sorcery. Carry this sign with you, it protects from all sorcery. The formula appears to be the Christian IHS. This is either a Greek monogram or abbreviation of the name Jesus, or it might stand for the Latin phrase in hoc signo, in this sign, or in other words, in the sign of the cross. 
Just like other examples in the previous videos, we have yet again a mixture between the pagan and the Catholic. To return sandings. In the Icelandic history of witchcraft and sorcery, we have many accounts of neighbors in sorcery battles, inflicting curses to one another, making their livestock sick or killing them, thievery, murder, even afflicting with great farting and other inconvenient and uncomfortable situations. If you have seen the three videos I've made, you already know what these people were up to. So, obviously, there was the need for protection and counterattack. This rune stave was carved on calf skin and placed in front of one's breast. If you wanted to send back to the other person, that which the person sent to you, but only armful spells. And now, just like the previous videos, finishing this one with a rune stave against sleeplessness and bad dreams. I'm sure after so many sorcery battles and curses, great pain, suffering, plus the trials of life and the religious persecutions, people had a lot of sleepless nights and nightmares. This rune stave was carved with magnetized iron on a piece of coal, and just like the previous rune staves for sleeping, this piece of coal was probably placed either under the pillow or near the place where one would sleep. Alright my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this series of Icelandic magical staves. All the links to my social media are down below in the description so you can contact me or just leave a comment and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video and... Tack för idag!